This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Stephen Jarvis and Friends podcast. Today, I'm trying something a little new. I left StreamYard, and now I'm on Evemux, I think it's called. So today, we are talking about the 1967 film, The Born Losers. The Born Losers is a 1967 American outlaw film, biker film. The film introduced Tom Laughlin as the half-Indian Green Beret vet Vietnam veteran Billy Jack. Since 1954, Laughlin had been trying to produce his Billy Jack script about discrimination toward American Indians. In the 1960s, he decided to introduce the character of Billy Jack in a quickly written script designed to capitalize on the then popular trend in motorcycle gang movies. The story was based on a real incident from 1964 where members of the Hells Angels were arrested for raping two teenage girls in Monterey, California. The movie was followed by Billy Jack, 1971, which saw AIP pull out of production midway through before others stepped in. Um, the plot of Billy Jack. Billy Jack is introduced as an enigmatic half-Native American Vietnam veteran who shuns society, taking refuge in the peaceful solitude of the California Central Coast Mountains. His troubles begin when he descends from the unspoiled setting and drives into a small beach town named Big Rock. A minor traffic accident in which a motorist hits a motorcyclist results in a savage beating by members of the Born Losers Motorcycle Club, led by Danny. The horrified bystanders are too afraid to help or be involved in any way. Billy Jack jumps into the fray and rescues the man by himself. At this point, the police arrive and arrest Billy Jack for using a rifle to stop the fight. Um... Police then throw Billy Jack into the jail, and the judge ends up fining him $1,000 for discharging a rifle in public. Um, the assaulters, meaning the bice, the motorcycle gang, get a $150 fine or 30 days in jail, which leads Billy Jack to having to sell his Jeep. Um, he is then later treated with suspicion and hostility by the police. Meanwhile, the marauding bikers, marauding bikers terrorize the town, rape four teenage girls, and threaten anyone slated to testify against them, with the kid brother of the leader being fingered as part of the rape. One of the girls later recants, saying she willingly gave herself to the biker gang after the gang goes to her house and turns the power off before breaking into the house to spook her. Despite the efforts of the police to get her to not recant, her mother defends her decision to not testify. Vicki Barrington, a bikini-clad damsel in distress, is twice abducted and abused by the gang. The first time she goes along with the idea of be being a biker mama if she can get drugs from her bike to take as a way to sneak up on a biker to knock him out and flee. Her supposed plan of ditching her bike to flee on foot results in her being caught and raped to the point where she is put in hospital. The second time, the bikers steal a cop car and try to steal her from the hideout after she agrees to testify for the trial. Her attempted escape has her run into Billy, who takes a swing at the bikers and takes Vicky to his location on her bike. She is spooked enough to not testify, and the gang later comes back to his place when the two are out for lunch and steal his money. Little by little, the other victims are spooked out by the bikers and ineffective sheriffs. In the night, Billy drives out to see the bikers to talk to their leader about his stolen money. He gives them until tomorrow to get it back before leaving. The next day, the bikers confront the two at a gas station. Billy fights gangrene and beats him before getting some of the money back and taking one of their bikes. Danny offers Vicky to serve as the sexually complacent, compliant biker mom of the easy way rather than being there by force, which she declines. The gang comes to the hideout to ask them to see Danny by their hideout. 
which reveals they have kidnapped one of the rape victims. The dad tries to intervene, but he fails. Billy is hit from behind with a tire iron and beaten after trying to distract long enough for Vicky to, ex to escape, but each fa fail. It is then that Vicky agrees to be a biker mama to get them to let go of Billy. At the police station, Billy is unable to help get help from the police or the local residents and must return to the gang's lair to rescue Vicky by himself. Particularly when the last victim recants, Billy, armed with a bolt-action rifle, captures the gang, shoots the leader between the eyes in cold blood, and forces some of the others to take Vicky, who's been badly beaten, to the hospital. As the police finally arrive, Billy abruptly rides away on one of the gang's motorcycles. The anti-authority sentiment continues up to the end when a police deputy accidentally shoots Billy in the back, mistaking him for a fleeing gang member. He is later found nearly dead, laying by the shore of a lake. He is placed on a stretcher and is flown to the hospital as Vicky and the sheriff give him a salute. Um, this movie was quite controversial at the time in that it was the very first movie, in a way, to ultimately show that uh, half Native American character was taking the law into his own hands. Later, we would get that with like um, movies like Walking Tall, I Spit on Your Grave, you know, kind of those revenge movies in a way. This one not being that, it's just saying that, you know, Billy Jack does not trust society. He shunned it. He's shunned by society himself. And um, he just does what he wants, gets in trouble for it. But then at the same time, he also sticks up for people that, in a way, can't fight back or choose not to fight back. And he shows them, hey, if you choose to fight back, you can defeat these demons or whatever that you're fighting. And ultimately, we find out that, you know, Billy is willing to do anything to protect people he truly cares about. Um, Tom Laughlin starred as Billy Jack. He even directed the movie under an alias. He, he wrote the movie. Um, they did have some... Uh, they, the Born Losers does have some kind of known actors at the time, like Jeremy Slate, who would also be in The Lawnmower Man. He'd be in a lot of other movies, too. Um, Robert Tessier, who was in uh, The Longest Yard. He was also in a couple of Duke. I think he was in one or two Dukes of Hazard episodes. Um, and Jane Russell was also in this movie, which was shocking, you know that they were able to get someone of that big um, of a star at that time into such a low-budget movie. And you can probably say this is probably one of the very first, if not one of the best, movies that was independently produced, directed, all that stuff to come out later and this is the very first movie there's four movies in total um the first one being the born losers the second one being billy jack the third one being billy jack goes to trial or the trial of billy jack and the fourth one being billy jack goes to washington um this one and billy jack the sequel did really well where the other two kind of the third one was also good but at the same time it 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 like most movies that are trilogies they kind of fall aside after the second one because you have such a good second one and then all of a sudden the third one's kind of a mild letdown and then the fourth one's a real letdown um there was supposed to be a fifth movie called i think the return of billy jack but per, uh, financing and him and Tom Laughlin getting injured during the making of the film kind of made that movie cease to exist. Um, but anyway, back to this uh, production. The movie was filmed on location in California at Seal Beach, Huntington Beach, Rancho Plaza Verdes, 
University of California, Los Angeles, Big Sur, Morro Bay, Playa del Rey, and other coastal location locales. The biker's lair in Playa del Rey was once owned by silent film star May Murray. According to Laughlin's DVD audio commentary, filming was completed in just three weeks on an operating budget of 160000 To cut costs, a stunt scene of a biker crashing into a pond was taken from American International's 1966 comedy, The Ghost in the Bikini, Invisible Bikini. Laughlin ran out of money during post-production, but showed the film to... American International Pictures, who bought out the original investors and gave Laughlin 300000 to finish it. The film was commercially successful and resulted in Laughlin being able to raise the funds to make its sequel, Billy Jack. In 1974, after the sequel proved financially successful, American International Pictures re-released Born Losers with the taglines, The Film That Introduced Billy Jack, and backed by popular demand, Born Losers the original screen appearance of Tom Laughlin as Billy Jack. The film was the highest grossing American international release until 1979 when the Amityville Horror was released. Um, reception of the film critically was bad. Um, film critic Leonard Malton criticized Laughlin's films for using violence as an indictment of violence. In 1967, Born Losers earned an estimated no, two million two hundred twenty-five thousand dollars in theatrical rentals in the United States and Canada. It was really released by AIP in 1974, following the success of Billy Jack. AIP issued ads which proclaimed the original Billy Jack is back, which led to a lawsuit from Laughlin. Following this, the advertising for the re-release of Born Losers was changed. All newspaper advertising had to include the disclaimer, this is a re-release, to make viewers aware that the film was not Billy Jack. By 1977, Born Losers had earned $12.5 in U.S. and Canadian rentals. It set a record in Mexico City playing at the Torito Metropolitan for more than 26 weeks, the longest run for a 35 millimeter film selling over 500,000 tickets. Um, there was also a banned Hungarian version, <laughs> which it was released in Hungary as Death's Hands, dubbed by cult Hungarian actors like Zoltan Latovitz. I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to say the rest of those names because I'll butcher them and then people get mad at me. The film caused a sensation in Hungary, Hungary, registering a full house at the Pushkin Cinema in Budapest and at other cinemas in Capital City. A month later, the film was banned in Hungary. Forty years later, the film has become very popular among Hungarian internet circles and on YouTube. Um... Billy Jack, or The Born Losers and the introduction of Billy Jack was so advanced at that time because it was a movie that kind of had the political social commentary. And you know me, I don't like talking about politics or any of that crap. But anyway, it was the first movie to do that. That said, you know... Look at how this guy, who ultimately becomes a hero later in the film, is treated. I mean, he's literally, in a way, even though you don't see it, he was pushed out from society. And he later lives up in the mountains. He wants nothing to do with people. He just wants to live in um, solitude by himself, and be happy. Well, when he finally goes down to the town and he sees this guy getting beat up while he's sitting in the, in a restaurant and no one's helping this kid, no one will, the even the proprietor of the restaurant won't even give a kid uh, a dime or whatever it was back then to call the police. And so Billy Jack grabs the kid, 
picks him up, gives him a dime or whatever it was to call the police. And when the kid's saying, hey, you know, I've been beaten up, the gang finds him, grabs him, they're beating him up in the alleyway. Well, Billy Jack, sensing no one's going to help this kid, goes to his Jeep, grabs his rifle, you know, and shoots up in the air and says, hey, you know, let the kid go, be on your way. Whatever he did, it ain't worth it. Well, the gang takes a disliking to him automatically. So then Billy Jack, in an essence, even though he does get arrested for discharging a firearm and all that, he's ultimately showing that, you know, the law there is so inept that he had to take command and protect this person or this person was going to get killed by this biker gang. And so the born losers doesn't really dove much into the political statements that the other films would later fall into. It's still a very great movie. If you haven't seen these movies, go watch them. Um, you can buy them at Walmart. I'm sure you can buy them on Amazon. Um, all four movies are very good. I would say probably the first two were the best. Trial of Billy Jack is up there, but at the same time, it, it he Tom Laughlin, and you'll find this out with a lot of his movies, was political. I mean, he, he doesn't show it much in Born Losers, but in other movies, he does. Like in Billy Jack... He talks about, you know, the treatment of Native Americans, how bad it is. And then in The Trial of Billy Jack, the third one, he talks about his time in Vietnam War and the Vietnam War and the massacre at My Lang. And it's, it's really something to behold with how these movies were made back then and were able to get away with some of the shit. I mean, that's not saying that he didn't have to kind of take over and re-release some of these movies. He had to because there was so many studios that wouldn't even touch his movies because of what he was trying to say. Nowadays, anyone will touch anything that's got social commentary, political views, whatever. Woke ideology, all that bullshit. And like I said, I'm not going to get into the political discussion because as we all know, I don't care. But anyway, he was doing that back then. Granted, he wasn't doing it as much as what today's films are doing. But he was also at the time saying, hey, you know, this ain't right. And so that is the story of the first Billy Jack movie called The Born Losers. Thursday, if I haven't already planned something out that day, I will talk about Billy Jack. And... Once I get done with Billy Jack, then next, the Tuesday after that, we'll talk about the trial of Billy Jack. And then that next Thursday, we'll talk about Billy Jack Goes to Washington. We'll be done with it after that Thursday. And after that, I'll probably go into a history of some sports team. All right. Thank you so very much. Hopefully this came out really well. Hopefully you guys can hear me. Um, if not... I'll re I'm going to watch it and re-record it if the audio isn't there. So thank you so very much. Also go check out the podcast of the month, which is Bev's video kingdom and go check out every podcast that's on the deluxe edition network.com as you will find many podcasts that you'll like. Uh, I mean, take it from me. I love all the podcasts on the network and people may say I'm biased, but I really do love the network the Deluxe Edition, or DEN Network, as it's uh, abbreviated to, is so very good. There's been nothing but helpful to all new YouTube or podcasters. Granted, I've been doing this for three years, but they've helped me get better. So I am Stephen Jarvis. This is Stephen Jarvis and Friends Podcast. I will talk to you all later. Oh, before I forget, sorry about this. I'm creating a Patreon. No, my episodes won't be put behind a paywall, but I will come up with like tiers. I think the first tier will be like whoever signs up 
and it, it will be affordable. It will be very affordable, I promise. Um, whoever signs up, they'll get a shout out on all my episodes. And that's all I got for now. Also, I will be releasing some merch soon. Um, just been trying to figure it all out. And my wife, Alyssa, who's the owner of this company that we created together, um, has been more of my business manager and deals with all that stuff with the ideas and all that. So be on the lookout for that. Um, and yeah, just, uh, go over to our YouTube channel if you haven't yet and subscribe. I truly do appreciate it. I love everyone that's subscribed, even to all my social medias, like Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. I love you all. Thank you so very much for the love and support that you've given this podcast. And I'll talk to you all later, all right? See you on Thursday. This is Stephen Jarvis signing off. This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com.